location history, and paranormal claims. The Brackenfern Manor Bed and Breakfast, which in the 1930s was part of a private gambling club and resort, named Club Arrowhead of the Pines, was rumored to have been run, and or owned by legendary mobster, Benjamin, Bugsy, Siegel. Through his connections with the Chicago mobs and their money, Bugsy decided to open this exclusive members-only resort in the late 1920s, after realizing that Lake Arrowhead was quickly becoming the new playground for the Hollywood elite. The property cost an amazing $1.3 million to construct, and opened on July 4, 1929. At the time, the resort was comprised of three individual buildings, consisting of a private gambling club, a brothel, a speakeasy, luxury guest quarters, an Olympic-sized swimming pool, tennis courts, a barber shop, a private gas station, a ski lift, horse stables, and a highly coveted supply of artesian well water, which was used in the making of moonshine. The building that now houses the Brackenfern Manor was known as the Market, during the time that Bugsy operated the property. The market was made up of a soda fountain and a butcher shop on its bottom floor, an ice house in its basement area, and the top floor housed the now infamous brothel, also known as, The Crib, where Bugsy employed a crew of wannabe starlets and working girls to entertain his gentlemen guests. The resort's former clubhouse, which housed the property's private gambling club and speakeasy, is now known as the Tudor House. The building is located directly across the street from the Brackenfern Manor, and still looks very much the same today as it did back in the 1920s. At the time that Bugsy managed the property, there was a secret underground tunnel which connected the clubhouse, to the market across the street, which allowed male guests to travel to the brothel undetected. The underground tunnel has long since been filled in, however, the door and steps which formerly led down to it are still intact. These locations were social hotspots in their day, and were considered a safe haven for illegal activity during Prohibition. Due to the suspected connections with the mob, the Brackenfern Manor Bed and Breakfast is believed to have been the scene of numerous deaths that have gone unreported and undocumented. Some of the alleged deaths include a caretaker named Ralph, who was said to have been thrown from the third-story window, after he was accused of having a relationship with Lily, the madam of the Brackenfern Manor. It was reported that his body was trampled by a passing wagon after it had already hit the ground. Ralph was the caretaker here back in the 30s, and the story as it was told to us is that Ralph took a little trip out the window here of some mobsters who did not like him fooling around with the girls here in the house. Supposedly, Ralph was asked to come up and fix this window. And as he got to the window, the mobsters came behind him and threw him out. Thrown on the back of a truck, next door to us is a national forestry, and he went on to be bear bait. person stay last month in a room next door and they were the only person in she found what looked like a man sitting in the corner of her room when she woke up turned on the lights nobody's there another alleged death that had occurred at the bracken fern is that of violet one of the working girls at the manor there are conflicting reports that indicate violet either committed suicide after the mob killed her lover or that she was murdered by a jealous lover. It is reported that one can still smell her violet-scented perfume wafting through the halls. So, what has, what is one of the stories that has happened here? Well, there was a girl named Violet, and uh, I think it was in the 30s, and they, you know, this was a brothel, basically, and, um, she was in love with this boy named Joey, and somehow, I don't know how it happened, but um, one of Bugsy's guys, rumor, 
shot him and killed him. And so she was devastated and she went up to her room and she killed herself. And so the story goes that she haunts this and people have talked to her. I know somebody who has. And uh, she's, uh, she's a little lost. She misses her girls. She wonders where they went. And um, she doesn't like men too much. And I guess we know why. And she doesn't, she doesn't really, she want, she's, doesn't like people making a big deal about her and proving that she existed. And so, you know, we try to kind of say, well, there are other girls here too, and they were important, and they have stories. The most curious of alleged deaths is that of a little boy named Ryan. It is believed that he was the son of one of the working girls at the Bracken Fern, and that he may have lived in the ivy room of the manor. It is purported that the small child died when he was trampled on by a team of horses near the property, although he may have died in some other manner, in or near the manor. There are reports made by staff and visitors of his tiny footsteps heard running throughout the bracken fern. It is also said that he will often take small items, such as keys, and that his tiny footprints can be seen in the snow around the manor on wintry days. So, and there is a story about a little boy that, um, I, I'm not sure, I think that it might have been one of the girl's sons, he was about four, and he was hit by a pit. Horses trampled it. And um, they say that when it snows every year that you can see little feet, I mean, little footprints across the road. The deaths of Ralph, Violet, and Ryan are seemingly unresolved, as it is believed that their spirits still remain at the manor to this very day.